AMD is 1600 AF based on its new product SKU. The AMD R5 1600 AF is a brand new CPU with an old, old name from 2017. It's mostly an R5 2600 in that it's a slower variant of the Zen Plus CPU from the 2000 series, but with a 1000 series name. AMD silently released the 1600 AF as an $85 option, but it's on 12 nanometer instead of 14 nanometer and carries other second gen Ryzen features. In today's review of the new $85 processor, we'll look at performance versus the original R5 1600, the R5 2600, overclocking performance as well, and whether the 12 nanometer 1600 AF will do about the same OC as a 12 nanometer Ryzen 2000 part. Typically, they were about 100 to 200 megahertz higher than the 1000 series, so this could mean a lot. Before that, this video is brought to you by Lian Li's O11 Dynamic XL. The O11 Dynamic XL is a follow-up to the critically acclaimed O11 Dynamic, but it's bigger to support more complex builds. We've done air cooling builds and an elaborate liquid cooling build in the O11 Dynamic XL, and we're confident in recommending the case as one of the best options on the market. Learn more about the Lian Li O11 Dynamic XL at the link in the description below. The AMD R5 1600 as AF is named as such because it's F comes after E in, in the alphabet. We think that's why, uh, because there's a 1600 AE. So the AE box version of the 1600 was the original, and the AF is a newer SKU. It's had a lot of discussion online. There were only really just Reddit threads for a while with no media coverage. So there weren't any official answers from AMD on if this is actually a 12 nanometer part or if hardware info was just incorrect, which can definitely happen. Sensors are wrong a lot of the time. So that's kind of where we stood. We reached out to AMD. We did get confirmation that it is a 12 nanometer part and more on that in a moment. But we also decided to buy one and test it. And the 1600 AF at about $85 is really pretty cheap, especially once you consider that it's more or less a 2600, which has been 100, 115, somewhere in that range for the last year or so now. And that was also a good deal at those prices. So for the 1600 AF at 85 bucks, you land between the 3000G, which is about $50, and the low end previous Ryzen parts, which this is, but the name is really weird on this. And that's why this whole thing's kind of odd. It's not misleading or bad marketing in a negative fashion. It's more that AMD could have done more with this for themselves. And it's, it's kind of weird to see a company miss out on an opportunity like that because this could very easily be named a Ryzen 3 or a Ryzen 5 3300X, or if they hadn't reserved it for the China launch parts, a 3500 or something like that. And it wouldn't even be weird because AMD already has Zen 1 parts with 3000 in the name. The 3000G is one of those. It already has Zen Plus parts with 3000 in the name. The APUs, the 3400G, the 3200G are Zen Plus. So it's not like it would be diluting the Zen 2 architecture or understanding of where that architecture is deployed at all. It'd fit in exactly the same way. So instead, with a one in front of the name, it just sounds like a two-year-old part when, in fact, it's not. It's actually, it's a brand new CPU built on a about a one-year-old uh, process step for Zen Plus, Ryzen 2000 series. So don't let the name fool you. The 1600 AF is a 2000 series CPU at its heart. So when we reached out to AMD, what AMD told us was that AMD is no longer making the Ryzen 5 1600 part of 14 nanometer, the 1600 AF is a second gen replacement for the first gen part. And it's because AMD no longer has inventory of the 14 nanometer wafers, at least enough of it for this task. So it has instead shifted to the newer 12 nanometer supply. This is also interesting because it indicates AMD was still making 1000 series parts and is still making 2000 series parts functionally with different naming though. So it's something we would have expected would have been killed off a while ago. That said, and they could have very easily released this as a Ryzen 5 3, or whatever, Ryzen something 3000 series part with a different name and everyone would they'd get a ton of media coverage. Everyone would be really hyped about it, but instead it just looks like an ancient part and it's not. Uh, another difference AMD noted to us that the smaller Wraith Stealth cooler is the trade-off here and part of the cost savings. That said, the 1600 replacement on 12 nanometer, one, is going to be more power efficient and two, the 2600 ships with the same cooler. So uh, for the most part, they should, if, it, if the 2600 is handled on it, then the 1600 AF should be fine too, but we're not looking at the coolers today. So uh, unofficially, the 2600 might be better binned than the 1600 AF, but there's no guarantee in any kind of overclocking, obviously, So, and we don't have enough sample size to know, but we can get into some overclocking today. And 
Before we get into all the gaming charts and results, the quick answer on how does it overclock is we did about 4,200 megahertz to 4.2 gigahertz on the 1600 AF, whereas the 1600 being Ryzen 1000 series was stuck at about 4.0 gigahertz, 3.9 in our instance of the one we tested. And this was typical Ryzen 1000 series. You could almost never get over 4.0. You're pretty lucky if you did, extremely lucky if you did. Ryzen 2000, you could get, you'd get stuck at 4.2 in almost all instances where we tested. So this one's at 4.2, even though it's 1000 series naming because of the 2000 series part. And otherwise, it's probably time to just look at some numbers. So let's get into the gaming benchmarks and see how this thing does. We should start with the frequency chart before wasting our time on testing. It wouldn't make sense to redo all of the game testing if the frequencies are identical. First, looking at an all-core workload from Blender and the GN logo render, we monitored the AMD R5 1600AF CPU average all-core frequency at 3647 MHz flat. There's no fluctuation here because unlike Zen 2, Precision Boost 2 isn't working to wildly fluctuate the clock based on every few degrees of change in the die temperature. The AMD R5 1600AE, that's the older one, plotted at 3399 MHz all-core average. There's a marked gain from the 1600AF just in the all-core frequency, and clearly the AF should be better in testing than the AE. For Cinebench R20 with a single thread load, we measured the AMD R5 1600AF's maximum frequency at 3699 MHz every second of the test, where it held at least one constant thread at that frequency. This is also when AMD's advertised boost numbers made more sense in this generation. The R5 1600AE, meanwhile, did about 3399 MHz to 3699 MHz, bouncing between the threads as the load was switched. The AF is doing a much better job at holding its frequency and is actually outperforming the R5 1600's originally advertised speeds. Hitman 2 with DirectX 12 is first, starting at 1080p. The R5 1600 retest data places it roughly the same as the original data, although slightly improved in average frame rate. The 87 FPS average R5 1600 stock CPU is outperformed by the R5 1600 AF's 96 FPS average by an impressive 10%, putting it about equal with an AMD R5 2600 stock CPU, which makes sense. The stock 2600 should do a bit better on average because of the frequency when stock, but otherwise they're pretty similar, if not the same. Overclocking the R5 1600 AF got it to 102 FPS average at 4.2 gigahertz, which outperforms the 3.9 gigahertz R5 1600 retest results, uh, 99 FPS average by 3.6%. That's about the same as the R5 2600 at 4.2 once again, which scored around 104-ish FPS average with the overclock. For $85, the R5 1600 AF is significantly more valuable than an AMD R5 3400G or 3200G, provided you can find a discrete GPU for the difference, and that shouldn't be too hard. That's obviously assuming a deployment where you can use a DGPU, though. As for the modern AMD R5 3600, that's at about 115 FPS average stock, so it's serving frames in about 20% less time per frame than the R5 1600 AF. It's certainly a better deal than the Intel i5-9600K's stock performance, and it's really, at $85, it's, it's very good performance for a budget PC. At 1440p, the results are mostly the same. That makes sense since these CPUs are all low end enough that we've become CPU bound. And so changing the load to be more on the GPU doesn't actually matter here because we're CPU limited to begin with. Assassin's Creed is next, where we often see direct thread impact and benefit for increased thread count. Frequency still matters though. The AMD R5 1600 stock CPU at initial testing did about 80 FPS average. The retest put us at 83 FPS average thanks to the new BIOS updates, Windows updates, all that stuff in the last few months. And the R5 1600 AF ran at 92 FPS average. That's an increase in average frame rate of 10% from the AE to the AF with neither meaningful nor noticeable impact to frame time consistency, but overall meaningful impact to average frame rate. The R5 1600 AF at 4.2 gigahertz did 98 FPS average, while the 3.9 gigahertz 1600 got stuck at 94 FPS average. The delta improving on the AF is 4.3%. As for the R5 2600, stock has us at about the performance of the R5 1600 AF stock CPU, while the OC repositioned that to rough equivalence with the R5 1600 AF OC. Once again, for 85 bucks, performance is strong and worthy of serious consideration. Even though it has a one in the front of its name, it's not an old processor. This would be great for a budget gaming PC. It's 2000 series Ryzen, just 
it's except the name isn't 2000 series, but everything else is basically. As for the much more expensive R5 3600, that one runs at 115 FPS average in this game, or 25% better than the R5 1600 AF stock CPU. Assassin's Creed at 1440p once again is predictable. We see no meaningful change here since the benchmark is primarily CPU limited, not GPU limited, and so performance is largely unaffected. Shadow of the Tomb Raider with DirectX 12 is next, beginning with 1080p testing. For this one, our original test results had the R5 1600 at 106 FPS average, 77 FPS 1% lows, and 64 FPS 0.1% lows. The retest for this review brought that up minimally to 108 FPS average and with nearly identical lows. Not much has changed for the 1600 since earlier this year, but it was still worth doing a second time. The R5 1600 with 3.9 GHz OC did score meaningfully better than our original set of tests for the year, up to 120.4 FPS average. As for the R5 1600 AF, stock performance exceeded the 1600 AE results by 9.7% at 118 FPS average instead of 108 FPS average. That puts it about on par with the R5 1600 OC retests 120 FPS average results. The R5 1600 AF at 4.2 GHz scored 125 FPS average, and for comparison, the AMD R5 2600 stock CPU scored about the same as the 1600 AF. There's no visible difference here to the player. And some additional retesting here, if we had sufficient time before CES, might have evened these numbers out a bit more still. But either way, it's about where we'd expect based on the previous results. The 4.2 GHz R5 2600 OC placed it a bit above the R5 1600 AF OC results and within test variants. All of these numbers make sense. They are, at this point, basically the same processor. That puts the R5 1600 AF as approximately equivalent to an R5 2600 in this title. The 2600's higher base and boost will put them closer to, well, should put the 2600 marginally ahead of the 1600 AF on average. F1 2018 is next and gives us a DirectX 11 look at games. We like this one because its frame rate is so remarkably high under either CPU or GPU intensive conditions. So from a testing standpoint, we can get a less mitigated look at performance. The AMD R5 1600 stock CPU moved from 199 FPS average to 205 FPS average with the retests, with lows also improving slightly. The AMD R5 1600 AF had an impressive 226 FPS average or a lead of 9.8% versus the stock and the R5 1600's 205 FPS average. The 1600 AF overclock jumped to 240 FPS average, about 6.5% better than stock, while the R5 2600 sat predictably close by. F1 at 1440p does have the results chopped a bit, mostly from the spikes that shoot higher on the GPU and the benchmark. The R5 1600 AF ends up at 213 FPS average and 221 FPS average for the OC 4.2 GHz result. The top gets chopped off these results, but the scaling is similar. Civilization VI is a turn time benchmark based in seconds rather than frames, allowing us to see AI simulation processing time. The AMD R5 1600 AF stock CPU required 40.7 seconds to complete each of the AI player turns on average, with the overclock to 4.2 GHz reducing that requirement to 37.1 seconds, or an 8.8% reduction. The AMD R5 1600 stock CPU, after retesting, required about 43.6 seconds to process each turn. The R5 1600 AF ends up at about 6.7% faster than the 1600 AE retest, or about equivalent to the R5 2600 stock CPU, once again. GTA 5 is the oldest game on our bench, but it's fun for its reduced reliance on cores. It's more of a look at how the older games were built, and given the fact that it's still consistently a top 10 game on Steam, it's worth a look. The AMD R5 1600 AF scored 85 FPS average stock, or about 93 FPS average with the 4.2 GHz overclock. The AMD R5 1600 AE retest had it at 77 FPS average, about the same as the original test from a few months ago. And the overclock put it at 86 FPS average. OC versus OC, the improvement in the 1600 AF is about 8.5% from AE to AF, when both are overclocked, the R5 2600 ran at around 86 FPS average, putting it about equal to or slightly better than the 1600 AF. Total War Warhammer 2's campaign benchmark is another CPU-heavy test scenario, and this one positioned the AMD R5 1600 AF at 131 FPS average stock, 141 FPS average overclocked with improvement to lows, and improved over the AMD R5 1600 retests, 119 FPS average by about 10% stock to stock. The results don't change versus our earlier set of tests for these CPUs, the AMD R5 2600 stock CPU ran, again, where you'd expect it. Uh, it's about 146 when overclocked. That puts it as better than the AMD R5 1600 AF stock to stock by about 5%. Overclocking isn't really much different since they're both 4.2. Finally, for the battle sequence, the R5 1600 AF ran at 138 FPS average stock, 146 FPS average overclocked, 
and the R5 1600 retested at about 124 FPS average stock, the same as previously and with invariance, and 132 FPS average overclocked, also the same. The R5 2600 OC placed roughly the same as the 1600 AF when looking at both sets of overclocked results, and the stock R5 2600 was just ahead of the R5 1600 AF stock result. We're gonna skip the production benchmarks for this one. We're about to fly to CES, so we're cutting it short, but also the results are all predictable. You've seen where the 1600 falls, uh, the AF that is compared to the 2600 now. So you can just look at our other charts with the 2600 on it to figure out where things would align. And that'll get you most of the way there. So check our other reviews for all the synthetics if you want to see how it does in Blender, Premiere, Photoshop, or something else. But otherwise, we've gotten you all the gaming numbers and the frequency numbers, and that's what really matters here. That's it then. That's everything for the 1600 AF. The $85 price point makes this actually a really good processor. It's good pricing. We were already happy with the 2600 at $100-ish USD. And we bought this 85, so it's properly the price. That's what we paid for it on Amazon, I think it was. And at 85, if you're really, we, our opinion always leans towards DGPU plus CPU discrete solutions rather than APUs, unless you're in a specific scenario where you're space constrained or something. But, and the 3200G is kind of forgivable in some instances because of its price. The 3400G is just kind of bad deal in most cases where you can fit a GPU. So for this one, if you can fit a DGPU in your box, you really might as well go with the $85 1600AF and a, a cheap GPU, like something in the $70 to $100 range. There's plenty of used options. There's some 570s, stuff like that. And you'd be way better off than with a 3400G if your case supports it. So the only odd thing here is not really negative in a way that matters from a consumer perspective, just kind of negative from AMD's own perspective, which is the marketing of this, not taking advantage of doing a refresh and naming it something else and kind of making it seem like it's a 3000 series part when it's not. You, know, you just, you kind of get used to that sort of stuff from AMD, Intel, and NVIDIA all alike. AMD 3000G, they aligned the names, but they stuck with Zen architecture. So. It's not something AMD's 400 to. It's just, it's a bit odd that they didn't do it for this one. I can't say that bothers me or doesn't bother me. I just find it weird from a manufacturer perspective. For consumers, who cares as long as you know it exists. Uh, it's a good part. We're, we'd be fine with buying it if you're trying to buy under 100 bucks for the CPU, get a, a good budget gaming CPU going with still a lot of threads to deal with other workloads or just because everything else in this price category kind of sucks. The 3000G is massively underpowered compared to the 1600 AF. So uh, also it overclocks pretty well. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more. Go to store.gamersnexus.net to help us out directly or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. We'll see you all next time.